Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and we're back today with the final episode of the Random Card Challenge. Last time out, we earned our final gym badge and overcame our rival on Route 22. In this episode, I'm going to attempt to go through the Elite Four and Champion with the teams I drew in the last episode. We have a bit of a mixed bag to work with today. Some good teams, some not so good. After making our way through Victory Road and reaching the Indigo Plateau, it's time to get started and try to make our way into the Hall of Fame. If you didn't see the last episode, here's the team we drew for the battle with Lorelei. Yeah, it's not ideal. We've got Venonat, Rhyhorn, Dratini, Goldeen, and Lickitung. Lorelei is an Ice-type master whose team is 80% water types because Gen 1 only had one non-legendary Ice-type that wasn't part water. Was there really no pure Ice-types until 3rd Gen? That seems weird. Anyway, the point is, we are not particularly well set up for this battle, but let's check out the team. In Pokemon Leaf Green, you can only obtain Lickitung through trading, so everybody say hi to Mark the Lickitung. Oh, hi Mark. The normal type is at level 54, and he's got the moves Strength, Screech, Brick Break, and Thunderbolt. Honestly, a lot of our hopes are riding on Mark here. After all, he's a world-class Pokemon and a truly great storyteller. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Next up, we've got Venonat. At level 52, she's got the moves Psychic, Supersonic, Sleep Powder, and Poison Powder. Rhyhorn's level 51, weak to Lorelei's entire team, and has a moveset featuring Rock Blast, Horn Drill, Stomp, and Takedown. Dratini's one level higher at 52, similarly weak to our opponent's whole team, and has Thunderbolt, Agility, Thunder Wave, and Outrage. Finally, we've got Goldeen at level 54, and she's got Surf, Horn Drill, Supersonic, and Horn Attack. As long as the Oko gods are on my side, I think we can do this. It's gonna be tough, but if we can win this first one, it's gonna give me a whole lot of confidence for the rest of this run. Lorelei sends out her Dugong first, and we send in Lickitung. The start of the battle nearly goes perfectly, but we get a little unlucky. With her first two moves, Dugong uses Surf and Hail, which isn't too bad, but a couple of Thunderbolts from Mark just fall short of knocking her out. She's left paralyzed with a sliver of health, but a full restore remedies that and leaves us at square one. After another Thunderbolt, Dugong outspeeds Lickitung to set up Safeguard, but a second Electric Shock finishes her off to give us the first win of the match. As Hale continues to whittle down Lickitung's HP, Cloyster is sent in and sets up a barrier with Protect. That stops Mark's first attack, but as Cloyster spreads spikes across our side of the field, Thunderbolt makes contact and one-shots Lorelei's second team member. Luckily, the Bivalve Pokemon has pretty pathetic special defense, so even without a same type attack bonus, we only need one move. Slowbro comes in third, and she's powerless to stop Lickitung. Three thunderous strikes cut down the only non-ice member of Lorelei's team after taking a single surf. We're definitely in great shape, but Lapras is up next, and she's the one I'm worried about. She knocks out Lickitung before he can deal any damage, and although it's a 4 on 2, we've still got a lot of work left to do. Goldeen is sent in, and there's only one strategy that I have any faith in. We're gonna one-shot Lapras. The spikes pierce Goldeen's flesh when she enters, but her speed allows her to move first. Unfortunately, with only 30% accuracy, Horndrill doesn't make contact and Lapras's body slam connects to paralyze Goldeen. That makes things a little more difficult, but we're still okay. Now that Goldeen's paralyzed, Lapras can outspeed and she uses that advantage to add confusion into the mix. After that confuse ray, Goldeen hits herself, and now our HP is getting dangerously low. Another body slam knocks Goldeen into red health, but she managed to break through the confusion and the paralysis to use Horn Drill, and this time, she makes no mistake. The one hit KO move makes contact, and Lapras' health drains hit point by hit point until nothing remains. The battle of the Horn Sea creatures has come to an end, and Goldeen has officially been crowned. Jinx is sent in, and with her energy sapped, one ice punch finishes off Goldeen. Venonat's up next, and her only contribution is to confuse Jinx with Supersonic. When she's taken down, we switch in Dratini, who cannot afford to get hit. Venonat's sacrifice wasn't in vain as Jinx hits herself in confusion, allowing Dratini to get off a Thunder Wave. That's going to be big. The Dragon type is now able to outspeed and land an Outrage before a crushing Ice Punch finishes him off too. We're down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Rhyhorn cannot take a hit here either. In Generation 5, Rock Blast's accuracy was increased to 90%, but for now it sits at 80 we get lucky and Rhyhorn's barrage of boulders slam into the paralyzed Jinx, knocking her out and handing us the victory. Every single member of our team was vital in this one. Without Venonat's confusion, Dratini couldn't paralyze Jinx, and without Jinx's paralysis, Rhydon wouldn't have been able to outspeed her. Goldeen and Lickitung's contributions were more obvious, but the whole team played their part here. Let's move on to Bruno. 
We drew a far superior team for the second Elite Four battle, so I'm not too worried about this one. We'll be using Rhydon, Pidgeot, Poliwag, Seedra, and Meowth against the Fighting Type Trainer. Here's what our team looks like heading into this one. With multiple water types and a fully evolved flying type on our side, we are really well set up here. We do only have one super effective move to use against fighting types, but I'm still pretty confident. Let's get into it. We start things out nice and easy with the quad effective surf from Poliwag destroying Onyx in one. Hitmonchan comes in and ends up scoring a knockout, which isn't too surprising. A boxer versus a tadpole doesn't seem like a particularly fair fight. Pidgeot gets revenge for Poliwag, knocking out Hitmonchan with a wing attack, and we're quickly back in control. Bruno sends in his ace, Machamp, and after a couple of hits, he's left with just a sliver of health, but a full restore ruins our hard work, as always. The fighting type ends up getting the better of Pidgeot. Honestly, I just think he's angry that a glorified pigeon is only a few inches shorter than him. Whatever his issue is, I definitely didn't make things any better by sending him Meowth and using Swagger. With his attack raised two stages, Machamp cracks Meowth with a cross chop, and he is just gone. That thing probably threw him back to Viridian City. We'll go collect him later. The tide of this battle has turned pretty quickly, and we need to get it back. Seedra comes in, and with one critical hit, she gets us right back on track. We're down to a 2 on 2, and after missing a Hydro Pump, Seedra's booted by a Mega Kick that leaves her with just one hit point remaining. We recall her and send in Rhydon, hoping for another Mega Kick, and we get exactly what we're after. Hitmonlee is still faster though, so Rhydon has to tank a Brick Break, which she does with ease. The Earthquake she fires back with knocks out Hitmonlee in one, and leaves us in good shape. Onyx is sent out, and although he outspeeds us, his Earthquake is nothing compared to Rhydon's. His does a small bit of damage, but hers is another one-shot. Bruno is beaten, and although that ended up being pretty close, I never really felt like we were going to lose. Let's move on to the Elite Four's third member. Given that Agatha is essentially a Poison-type trainer, we got pretty lucky to draw two fully evolved Psychic types. Although her team also has a lot of super effective stab moves to use against them, so there are pros and cons with this team. We're going to be using Exeggutor, Poliwhirl, Zubat, Starmie, and Pikachu for this one, so let's check their movesets. We've got Poliwhirl at level 56, with the moves Surf, Hypnosis, Hydro Pump, and Psychic. Exeggutor is at level 54, and he's got Reflect, Leech Seed, Solar Beam, and Psychic. Zubat's also at 54, and she's got Bite, Poison Fang, Confuse Ray, and Wing Attack. At level 53, we've got Starmie, with Surf, Confuse Ray, Recover, and Psychic. Finally, we've got our level 58 Pikachu with Thunderbolt, Agility, Double Team, and Thunder Wave. You probably noticed that she's only got 2 PP remaining for Thunderbolt, but uh, I didn't realize that at the time. After going through Lorelei and Bruno, my team was a bit lacking in the PP department. I don't think I've ever said a bit lacking in the PP department before. This, uh, <laughs> this channel brings you to new places. Okay, let's get this battle going. We send in Poliwhirl for starters, and Agatha leads off with her first Gengar. Although she manages to land a Shadow Punch, she can't live through two hits of Psychic, and we're one up early on. Golbat is sent in next, and once again, two uses of Psychic do the job, but an Air Cutter further weakens Poliwhirl. It seems like Agatha wants to keep the cycle going, so she sends in Arbok third, and another two attacks deal with the Snake, making it a 5 on 2. At this point, Poliwhirl has only got four hit points remaining, and sadly, when Agatha's second Gengar comes out, a Sludge Bomb finishes him off. We send in Pikachu next, and Gengar immediately puts her to sleep and uses Nightmare. She quickly wakes up and paralyzes the ghost with Thunder Wave, and while Gengar can't move, the Electric Mouse attacks with two Thunderbolts. She's in complete control, but she's also out of PP for her only attack, and that's less than ideal. We're forced to switch out to Starmie, but Thunder Wave has truly done its job. Gengar is still unable to move, and yet another Psychic leaves Agatha with just one. As always, barring the Giovanni battle, we want to use our whole team, so after confusing Haunter with Confuse Ray, we recall Starmie and send in Zubat. The confusion doesn't hinder Haunter quite as much as the paralysis damaged her evolved form. She easily deals with Zubat, and when we bring out Executor, our whole team is featured, so he uses one last Psychic to finish the battle. With three quarters of the Elite Four beaten, only Lance remains. Let's have a look at the powerhouse team we've drawn to take him on. We've got the team of Ammonite, Spearow, Tentacruel, Goldeen, and Weedle. I'm gonna go on record and suggest this will be the first time that anyone has ever used this particular quintet to take on the Dragon Master. Let's have a quick look at this elite team. At level 60, Weedle's got the only two moves that she can learn, Poison Sting and String Shot. At level 56, Ammonite has the moves Ancient Power, Tickle, Ice Beam, and Hydro Pump. Tentacruel's at level 54 with Surf, Screech, Ice Beam, and Sludge Bomb. Spearow's got a moveset featuring Fly, Leer, Agility, and Drill Peck, and she's at level 58. 
finally we've got Goldeen returning from earlier with the same move she had against Lorelei. This time around, only two of our opponent's Pokemon are susceptible to Horn Drill, so it probably won't be quite as useful. Right, let's give this a go. Lance leads off with Gyarados, and we start out with Weedle. Intimidate lowers Weedle's attack, which will probably stop her from sweeping, but she can still deal a lot of damage. Or not. For some reason, a single Hyper Beam knocks out Weedle, which I don't think any of us were expecting. We send in Tentacruel, and she gets to work by using Screech. With Gyarados' defense harshly lowered, a Sludge Bomb takes him below half health. A Dragon Rage cuts away 40 HP, but she fires off a second Sludge Bomb to knock out Lance's first team member and level up the match. Dragonair comes in next, and an Ice Beam takes him low enough that Lance feels the need to use a full restore, but that ends up working out perfectly for us. Tentacruel ends up one-shotting Dragonair with a Crit Ice Beam, and for some reason Lance sends out his second Dragon Snake next. This time Dragonair responds to Ice Beam with a Dragon Rage, allowing a second attack to finish him off. Dragonite comes out fourth, and Tentacruel's on an absolute tear. Ice Beam is quad effective, and after one shot takes the dragon below half health, a retaliatory wing attack leaves Tentacruel with just three hit points remaining. That survival means she can use Ice Beam once again, knocking out Dragonite and leaving Lance with only his Aerodactyl. The fossil Pokemon has extremely high speed and attack, so we're a long way from winning this. Wing attack finishes off Tentacruel, who has just single-handedly wiped out four-fifths of Lance's team. We send Spearow out, and before we've even put the Pokeball away, we recall a fainted Spearow. That went… well. Goldeen's our next choice, and she actually stands up really well to Aerodactyl's attacks. She lives through two hits and responds with a couple of Surfs, which leave Lance's final Pokemon in red health. We run into our eternal enemy, the Full Restore, but knowing that it was coming, we do at least manage to confuse Aerodactyl with Supersonic. Unfortunately, I misclicked and used it again, which is entirely useless, but the Rock Flying type does help out by hitting himself with Confusion. A combination of Surf and Confusion damage leave Aerodactyl below half health, and we switch Omanyte in for Goldeen. Another hit of Confusion takes him into red health, and even though he gets off an Ancient Power, Omanyte connects with Hydro Pump, handing us the win and leaving only the champion to beat. For the final battle of the series, we drew the team of Magikarp, Abra, Hitmonchan, Raticate, Bellsprout, and Ghastly. It all comes down to this. Can Magikarp come up big when we need it? The fish has gotten the better of Gary once in this run, and he's got another chance to cause an upset now. For the last time in the series, let's have a look at the team. Starting out with our shiny Ghastly, who's at level 59 with the move Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Thunderbolt. Hitmonchan's a couple of levels higher, and he's got Brick Break, Agility, Earthquake, and Mock Punch. Our shiny Raticate is up third, and at level 59, her moveset is made up of Return, Endeavor, Blizzard, and Superfang. It's sort of just occurring to me how weird this team will look if you haven't seen any of this series before. For regular viewers of the series though, let's get to everyone's favourite. Bellsprout's level 59, and his moveset's made up of Razorleaf, Growth, Sleep Powder, and Sludge Bomb. Our lowest level team member at level 57 is Abra, and he has the moves Psychic, Double Team, Calm Mind, and Shockwave. Finally, at level 53 we've got Magikarp, with a pretty classic setup featuring Splash, Tackle, and Flail. Okay, one last time, let's get into it. For what feels like the 80th time in this series, Gary sends out his first catch to start because he loves a routine, and we start out with how? The Ghastly. A Thunderbolt shocks Pidgeot into submission and leaves him on the cusp of unconsciousness, but if we've learned one thing on this channel, it's that Gary loves a full restore. That allows the bird Pokemon to get off an Aerial Ace, which deals significant damage, but Ghastly still comes out on top after a couple of Thunderbolts. Gary chooses Alakazam next, and he really hasn't learned from his failure in the last episode. The Psychic type leads off with Future Sight, and how? Fires off a Shadow Ball, which leaves him in red health. You know what move Gary called for next. I know what move Gary called for next. Alakazam knew what move was going to be called for next. Future Sight. Gary really has no concept of how this move works, does he? A second Shadow Ball puts Alakazam out of his misery, and he can take peace in the knowledge that he'll never be forced to use Future Sight again. Gyarados is up next, and as is always the case in our rival battles, Gary sent in the Water Flying type against a Pokemon he's fully aware has an Electro type move. One Thunderbolt takes care of Gyarados, and just like that, Ghastly has wiped out half of Gary's team. Arcanine's out fourth for Gary, and he doesn't even get the chance to attack how? Future Sight finally shows up to finish off the blue gas ball, and in his comatose state, a smile reflects off of one of Alakazam's spoons. We go out to Hitmonchan next, and in a battle of flamethrowers versus earthquakes, the fighting type comes out on top. His very good special defense comes in handy, and leaves our rival with just two Pokemon remaining. 
Venusaur is Gary's penultimate Pokemon, and although Hitmonchan does some serious damage with Earthquake yet again, the fully evolved Grass starter eventually overcomes him with Solar Beam. We bring Hitmonchan back and send in our shiny Raticate. She outspeeds Venusaur to land a return, knocking him out and taking Gary down to one. We're essentially into our victory lap now. We can't lose from here. Rhydon comes out and a Super Fang cuts away exactly half of his health, which should be sufficient. We're obviously not going to go out without using our whole team, so Abra's up next. After a scary face, there's not much to do, so I switch straight out to Magikarp. He gets hit by a takedown, but you just can't knock out Magikarp with one hit. From this range, I was pretty sure that Flail would finish off Rhydon, but for some reason it only does about one hit point of damage. Not quite sure what happened there, but he's definitely softened up the ground in Rock type. When he falls to Rock Tomb, Bellsprout replaces him and fires off a Razor Leaf to knock out Rhydon and earn us the win. Ghastly's incredible run really put us in complete control, and from there, we couldn't really lose. As far as the question goes, the answer is yes. You can beat Pokemon Leaf Green using teams drawn from an old deck of Pokemon cards. I've had a lot of fun making this series and loads of people have asked, and there will be a second series of the Random Car Challenge. That won't be coming immediately, but it shouldn't be too far away. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.